Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be going back to the very first tutorial I ever made on the channel. Woohoo! And remaking it with some updated information and obviously better sound because that was back when I was using a crappy little laptop to record all this stuff. You're not going to need any additional files for this, however if you would just like to download the particle system directly you can support me on Patreon and you will get access to the files that we create in this tutorial. Now what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be creating a simple material and then we're going to be creating our particle system and I'm going to run through some of the reasons we're doing what we're doing with a particle system and then tell you different ways that we can have this system optimized depending on the way that we handle our collision. So let's just get rid of these lovely particles. Goodbye particles. They're gone. Woo. So we're going to right click and we're going to select material and we're just going to call this rain underscore m and we're going to open this up. And now what we're going to do is before we add any data here, we're just going to change our blend mode to translucent and our shading model to unlit. So we don't want shadows to affect our rain as it's falling and we want to be able to see through these things if we choose to do so. First thing we'll bring in is a particle color. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to change the color of our particles inside of our cascade system as well as its alpha. Now we're just going to plug our color pin directly into emissive color because that's all we need. We just need a color for these. As I say, this is going to be a really simple material. We're going to right click and we're going to search for a radial gradient exponential. And what this essentially will do if we just start previewing this is it just creates a really soft kind of dot or circle for us. And we're going to be using this as a mask. You can see here we have a nice faded white into a black and on a plane, which is what our particles will use by default. We get this nice softer edge so they don't look very sharp. We'll just stop previewing that. And to use this, we're not going to plug it directly into the opacity because we need to be able to change this inside of our particle system. We're just going to hold M and left click for a multiply and we will take the alpha pin from our particle system, our particle color rather, and multiply the radial gradient by this and plug that into the opacity. And now we'll be able to change how see-through our rain is inside of our particle system. We're just going to hit apply and we will close this down. Now we'll build the particle system. We're going to right click and we're going to select particle system and we'll call this rain underscore p. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this into our world and you'll just see we get some some default particles. We open this up. There we go. We get the default particles, which is like this little cross here. We're going to change all this around. So first thing, I'm just going to change our background color up just a little bit. So it's a little bit lighter like so. And what we're going to do first is we're going to bring in our material. To do so, we click on the required under our emitter. And we now have our material available on the left. I'm just going to drag our rain material into the material and let go. While it compiles that, we are just going to see regular planes with nothing on them. Don't worry about it. It will catch up and it will update itself for you. The next thing that we're going to do is because we want to have quite a lot of rain, we're going to be moving our particles to render on the GPU. By default, our particles render on the CPU and to have more particles and have them more smooth in our scene, we need them to render on the GPU instead. So to do this, we're just going to right click, type data, new GPU sprites. Now you're going to get a little error that says that we don't have a bounding box. Don't worry about this yet. We're going to make the entire particle and then we'll make the bounding box afterwards. And what the bounding box does is it basically shows us the area where our camera will be able to see our particles. If your camera is not looking at a bounding box, the particles won't spawn and they won't be rendered. If you are looking at the bounding box, then you'll be able to see them. The reason we're going to change this later is because right now our bounding box is going to be very, very small to this area. So if we add a rain over a larger area later, obviously we'd have to be looking at this point because this is where our bounding box is. Otherwise, our rain won't render. Before we get to that, we actually have to make the entire area that's going to contain our rain. So the first thing we'll do is right now this isn't very rain-like. This is more like a little wispy, smoky thing. We need it to be heading downwards, and we'll do this using initial velocity. So we'll head to initial velocity. And in our uh, max and our min, we're just going to change the z value to negative 500, and this will spray them downwards. Whee! And now these are going to be quite big. If we were to look inside of our level here and lift this, oh, <laughs> lift this up instead of just fly away, you can see these are quite large compared to our little player. What we're going to do is we're just going to shrink them down. In our initial size, we're just going to change 
to a distribution vector uniform, in fact, a vector constant rather. And we're just going to set these to three. And now all of our particles will be the same size and they're much smaller than they were before. So we have our velocity and we have our size. Our color, we're not going to mess with that right away. We're going to do that afterwards. Our lifetime, however, we're going to just up the lifetime to maybe five, like so because we want these to last quite a while because they're going to be falling from the sky and we don't want them to disappear before they ever reach the ground. We're using GPU sprites as we've set this up already and our spawn is currently only spawning 20 of these guys. What we're going to do is we're just going to up this number to maybe 200 and this will give us a nice light rain. Right now it's going to look a bit like just a spray because we're still just coming, uh, we're still just spawning these at a singular point. To change that, what we're going to do is right click and then we're going to head to location, initial location. And by default, our start location is going to be a vector uniform, which will give us essentially all three of our axes to work with. We're going to be changing our X to 500, our Y to 500. And you can see this is giving us a nice box, but it's giving us a box with our origin in the corner. So you can see here, we're going 500 and 500. But we want our box to be surrounding this origin point just so that we can use our little uh, board here to let us know where our particles are going to be when they're inside of our level. So we're going to add negative 500 to both the X and the Y. Now if we were to check, you can see that our little board here is in the middle of our particle system. You can see there, that's the bounds working. You see they turn off if I'm not looking at it. We'll fix that afterwards. Now we're going to just place this particle system back down on the ground. And we're going to set the initial location Z to 1000. And now, oh, I just want to change this. There we are, 1000. And now this will spawn our particles way up in the sky. Now we have the entire area that we're going to be spawning these from. At the top, under bounds, we're just going to click this little drop down. And we're going to set fix bounds. And if we click bounds, you'll be able to see this nice big blue and yellow area and this is where our camera can be looking to spawn these guys now if i was to raise this up like before if i was to move my camera so they can no longer see the emitter you can see we can still render the particles it's grand so what we're going to do now because these are little dots they look more like snow what we're going to do is we're just going to right click and we're going to say size by speed and we're going to increase our speed scale to 5 on both x and y. Our maximum scale, we're going to say 0.3 on x and 5 on y. And now you can see we get these nice long particles. Yay, it looks a bit more like rain. The problem we have now, though, is it's just falling straight down. And if we were to look up, you can see they turn sideways like spaghetti. So to stop that, we're going to right click, orientation, lock axis. And we don't want them to rotate on the Z, so we're going to lock rotate Z. Now if we look up, you can see they still face straight down. The other problem that we're going to currently have is these are currently just falling straight down in a line. But imagine if they had wind. So if we go to our initial velocity, in fact, we'll right click, add an acceleration and a constant acceleration. And we'll say minus 100 on the Z, so they get faster the longer they fall. And we'll add wind here as well. So let's say we say 500 on our acceleration in the X. They will now get pushed sideways, but they're still going to face downwards. The reason they're going to face downwards is because in our required, our screen alignment is PSA square. It's always going to keep them square, and it's always going to face the same way, depending on where our camera is. We're going to change this to PSA velocity, and now it will align them based on their velocity. And you can see that our lovely rain will now go sideways if we add a sideways acceleration. We're just going to set this back to zero for now, just so they fall straight down. But we now have the option, if we wanted to, say 1000, to really blow them in some wind, like so. Pretty cool. So we have our constant acceleration. The thing we need to do now is we need to add our collision. If we were to come into our little level here and we select our particle system so we can see them all highlighted in orange, you can see here that they're falling through our floor. We don't want that, we want them to actually disappear when they collide with something. So this way we can have our rain disappear if we're indoors and reappear if we're outdoors. We're going to right click and we're going to head to collision and we're going to set just a collision. 
If we select this now, you can see our response here is bounce on the scene depth. So if we were to look here, you can see that our rain is bouncing upwards. Now this is where I'm going to talk to you about some optimization things and the different ways that we can set our rain up. By default, GPU sprites use our scene depth to decide what to do. If we were to change response to kill, then when our little particles here collide with something, you can see that the orange where our particles uh, are currently at disappears as soon as it hits our ground. If we go underneath our ground, like so, you can see that it still disappears. However, because we're using scene depth, scene depth rather, if we cannot see the object that is being collided with, they won't collide. Because that object's not getting drawn, our GPU isn't going to collide our particles. Similarly, if we're inside the object here, you can see they're just going to fall straight through. And this is where you have a decision to make over which sort of collision that you want to use. By default, they are going to be using the scene depth. And as I say, if you can't see the object, then our particles won't collide. If we were to drag this upwards, like so, we can't see them, so they're not colliding, they're coming straight through. If we can see it, you can see now our particles no longer are coming through here. If you're okay with that and you're not planning to have any indoors area, screen uh, scene depth is going to work perfectly fine for you. However, if you want this to work while you're in an indoors area, we're going to be changing our collision mode to distance field. And what distance field is going to do is it's going to allow us to have pre-baked areas from all of our meshes through our lighting, have the collision data constantly available, whether or not we're currently looking at our particles. If we change it to distance field, you are going to have to change your render settings. So we're going to head to edit and we're going to go to project settings. And under render or rendering rather, we're going to search for mesh distance fields and we're going to turn this on. By default, this is turned off. When you turn this on, it is going to restart your engine and depending on how many different shaders you currently have it might take a little while to reopen don't worry about it if it gets a little bit stuck it is going to reopen it just needs to realign all of the shaders for you once that's on you'll be able to go ahead and see that our rain no longer falls through our ground even if we can't see the object our rain is colliding and dying as it should do because now we're using a pre-baked set of data we don't want to duplicate that let's raise up our floor here if we raise this up as like a roof you can see now we're not getting any rain inside but we are getting our rain on the outside or rather we would if the rain that spawned above where we've just placed that there we go you can see our rain no longer goes onto the inside here but it is outside and that's how we can optimize our rain Obviously, that's going to be project dependent. If you need indoors and rain outdoors, then setting that up is the easiest way to have your rain collide and respond to your meshes correctly. Now, we can open this up and we can go ahead and we can say spawn. We can really crank these numbers up because they're working on the GPU. Obviously, as with all things, you want to work in moderation. One thing that you can do to obviously make these things look a little bit uh, well, to, to optimize these a little bit more, especially if you're making a single player game, is to just attach the uh, the particle system to your character so the rain always moves with it. That way you don't need to cover a larger area and you can use less particles and it's going to be a little bit more effective and less expensive to render. And obviously, depending on how heavy you want your rain, just change the amount that you're currently spawning. We'll save that. We'll just get rid of this little roof here. One other thing that we can quickly do is we can open up our rain particle. Right now we're using color over life, which is kind of a waste. We're just going to delete this out and you're going to see that your particles will disappear. What we're going to do is right click, head to color and just give them an initial color. By default, that will be set to white with an alpha of one, which is exactly what we just had. And we can maybe change this to be a slightly lighter blue and give it a lower alpha just so that it's hinted a little bit more. There we go. So it's a bit more subtle and we can see through it a little bit quicker and it just gives it a bit more of a, an illusion. They feel heavier towards the camera. You can see here they're much more visible towards the camera and uh, further away they're less pronounced. So there we go guys. Yay! Updated rain particle system. It's been a while since we've done rain. 
But there we are, that's it in Cascade. I do plan on also doing a video on how to set this up inside of Niagara as well for those of you that are making the switch to the new Niagara systems. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.